Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today I'm going to build another switch mode power supply. And I say another switch mode power supply because I've dabbled with this in the past. Alright, I've dabbled in this in the past. And I came up with a working design, but I was kind of trying to run before I'd learned to walk, you know, kind of thing. So, um, now as I'm a little older and a little wiser, I thought I'd try and make something a little bit better. So, this is what I got in mind. Now, this is a very rough schematic of what I've got planned out. I might make lots of changes to this, but hopefully this thing is going to have adjustable voltage and current limiting. And it looks very complicated, I know, but... There's only really a few key parts in this. We've got a TL494, which is going to do most of the controlling. Then we've got an IR2110 gate driver chip, which supplies both the high side and the low side for these MOSFETs here in this half bridge, where the output transformer is connected. And then, of course, we've got the feedback networking, so it knows what it's doing. Yep, it's that simple. So, I have absolutely no idea how well or even if this is going to work, but I'm going to build it up and see if it works. This is entirely my own design, so it'll probably blow up the instant I switch it on, but we'll see. I think the first change I'm going to make to this, though, is we've got a little linear supply here to provide the 5 volt and 12 volts for these chips here. So what I'm going to do is I can replace the, even this part with a switch mode supply. So, I cracked open a wall wart and I got this. Now this is a little switch mode supply, it doesn't appear to be regulated, I don't see any kind of feedback networking in this thing. But I measured the output voltage of that and that's about 14 volts, and I also, in my spare parts bin, have two of these. Now one of these works and one of them doesn't, but I can make one of these into a 5 volt regulator, so we've got like about 14 volts out of this one, and then, then we'll have about 5 volts from that one, and that should be good enough. Okay then, so I've got one of the little switch mode regulators connected up. I don't know if this is the one that works or not. So I'll just switch it on. So I've got it connected up to my power supply. And yep, this one seems to be the one that works. So, I'm going to just adjust the voltage here. Let's get that to about 5 volts. And then, yeah, we've got a perfect replacement for our 7805 regulator. So there we are, we've got the power supply for the logic parts. Anyway, I'm going to build up the rest of this on the breadboard, and we'll see how it works. We'll see how well it works. Or even if it works. Okay, well, thought it was about time I built something, so... I've got something built on the breadboard now. And this circuit is based on this circuit here. And this is a 12 to 24 volt converter, which I've decided to use as the basis of my design. So let's have a look at the changes I've made. This is basically a building block, just connected up to a few extra parts, so I can test that it works. Now the main difference I've made is I'm using an optocoupler in the feedback network, because the final design is going to be mains powered so it's going to need isolated feedback, which is why I've used an optocoupler in the feedback circuit. Which is why I've used an optocoupler in the feedback network. Now bear in mind that with this particular circuit, I'm not going to be able to get any lower than what the supply voltage here is. I mean the supply voltage here is going to stay the same, but here I'm going to vary it. But let's say I was powering this on 6 volts. I won't be able to get the output voltage to go any lower than that because if we look at the transformer you can see that it has two center tapped windings and both of those are connected to this rail here I mean I would be able to get about maybe 500 millivolts less than that but that's about as low as it will go so just need to keep that in mind and also need to keep in mind that this is not the final version of the circuit this is just mainly for experimental purposes. 
The only thing I thought might be a little bit difficult is getting the transformer. Because I thought for a few minutes that I wasn't going to be able to find a transformer like that in my parts box. However, that's not going to be a problem anymore because it turns out I do have a transformer that fits that description pretty well. This is the transformer out of an old PC power supply. And it has two center tap secondaries, which are both connected at this really thick wire here. So that thick wire goes to the center of both of those secondaries. And basically this circuit is what you saw earlier. So, gonna power this up. So this meter here is gonna measure the input voltage. This meter here is gonna measure the output voltage. And I'm even probing one side of the TL494 with the scope so we can see what that's doing. Sorry, the picture's a bit lopsided here. There's not much I can do about that. Need to make a better mount for the camera. But anyway, I'll just turn this on and we can see it in action. So, I'm putting about 6.5 volts in. We're getting about 9.3 volts out. And if I turn this control here, we can change the output voltage. So you notice the voltage is rising and the pulse width increases. So. I'm not going to go any higher than that, just in case I blow my bulb, because I don't really know what voltage those are rated for. So I can go up. And I can also go down. And as you notice, the pulse width has become really thin. In fact, if I go far enough, we're at a point now where the chip is completely shut off. So, yeah. And as you can see, we're still getting a little bit of output voltage, because, like I said earlier, we'll only be able to go down to about half a volt less than what our supply voltage is, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much what we got here, okay? It's not exactly half a volt, but I'll just turn this up a little bit. Let's put this on to 12 volts output. Okay, and now I'm going to change the supply voltage. Don't know what that was out there. Probably some drunk driver crushed into something, I don't know. But now I'm gonna change the supply voltage. So I'm going to increase the supply voltage and you'll notice this voltage here does not change or changes very, very little. Okay, so we're at 9 volts and as you can see absolutely no change whatsoever. And the pulse width has thinned out to compensate for the increased voltage to keep the voltage going into the bulb the same. So, let's go down to about 5 volts and you'll notice the pulse width increases There we're at 5 volts, the pulse width has gotten pretty fat, and the voltage, our output voltage, is still exactly the same. So how cool is that? We've made a regulated switch mode booster! Now, I know what some of you are asking. What about the current feedback? There's no current feedback in the circuit. Yes, I know that. I haven't got to that yet. But what I do have is a way of simulating what the chip is going to see when the current increases through the current feedback circuit. So when the current gets past a certain threshold, this happens. Completely shuts off. And I think it's going to do that, it, turning on and off really quickly to keep the current regulated. Of course, that's not where I'm stopping because now we know this all works. It's time to build the rest of the circuit. Okay, well, amongst this mess of wires is a functioning, or somewhat functioning, switch mode power supply. However, there is a problem. I have no voltage regulation. I've just got it powering up this fan right now. And our voltage is about 11.2 volts. Now, I should be able to adjust the voltage via this control here. And I get nothing. So I'm just turn that off. Good news, everybody. I found the problem and now it's fixed. Yeah, just turns out 
had a couple of connections on the opto coupler the wrong way around. Anyway, that's stupidity on my part again. But, let's just turn this on. Oh, in case you're wondering what this is all about, that's just... I'm just running this at a lower voltage than it normally would be running at. And I've got that bulb in the circuit for current limiting, just in case anything goes wrong. But now, hopefully you can tell by the tone of the fan that I've got connected to this, when I adjust this... I can now adjust the voltage. As EEV blog would say, you bloody ripper! So, we now have a working, regulated, built entirely from scratch, and entirely my own design, switch mode power supply. I know it still doesn't have current limiting, but I am going to implement that later on. You know, got to take small steps and work your way up. But I'm really happy with this so far. And that's a lot better than what I was getting when I first connected this up and it wasn't doing anything at all. And the reason why was because I'd forgotten one simple little ground connection. I think it's about time that I built this up on a proper board. And then I think I can call it a day. Yay! And of course, here is the circuit so far. I've had to go to my other camera because my webcam has finally decided to stop working. So anyway, so far, in place of all this here, I've just used my homemade power supply. I know, it's kind of weird using a power supply to power up parts of a power supply. But eventually it's all going to be self-contained. And also, I've redone how the optocoupler is connected. So, what you can see here is now exact to what you can, what we have here, or rather, what I have here. So, all that remains is to put this onto a proper board, put in the current limiting circuit, and I think that'll be that. But that's going to be in another video, because this is getting too long already. So yeah, like I always say, until next time, goodbye. Oh, wait a minute. I've got to do something about that camera angle. It's evil. Good news, everybody. And the transformer they've used here has two center tapped windings. And if you look, you can see the center of those are both connected to the primary of the feedback and the thing here. Had a couple of connections on the opto coupler the wrong way around. Sorry about that. So okay, we oh god. All right, do we got sound? Okay, we got. We got sound. I gotta adjust my camera because my camera sucks. Actually, my video suck. Come on, work. I for just science. Arm of stuff that does not work properly. I think it's about time to bin this camera.